How's it going, my Ruby friends? Thank you for tuning in. In this video, we're going to be talking about Volume 6, Chapter 2, with the sneak peek that was released on Ruby Rewind today. Um, but before we get into the spoilers and the information given to us for Volume 6, Chapter 2, and the theories that are going to come up to all that, we'll talk about all that. But first, two announcements. The first one, I just want to give a quick thanks to Ditto, because I was going to forget about Ruby Rewind. I was so focused on other theories today that I forgot Ruby Rare Wine was out today. So Ditto, thank you for reminding me about that. The second announcement is I'm going to be showing just a handful of pictures from Ruby Rare Wine. Now, there's always, you know, a chance that there's going to be that one guy in comments who is like, you're not allowed to show that because it's first only. You're disobeying Rooster Teeth. Let me explain why that's not the case. You see, I've already emailed Rooster Teeth and they just don't want us to react to the episode, the full episode, until it is released for free for the free accounts on roosterteeth.com. Nowhere did they say you can't react to the preview in Ruby Rewind. But even though they didn't say that, I'm still not going to do that. I'm not going to show the clip. I'm not going to react to the clip. I'm just going to show like maybe five screenshots of the clip. That way the viewers can better understand what I'm talking about. And that's just going to make a better, more hype environment where we can discuss this, build hype for the show. You know, Rooster Teeth monetize my videos. They get paid from the content that I make. I will do everything I can to support Rooster Teeth. So that's why even though like they didn't say you can't show the clip, I'm still not going to show the clip. I would highly advise if you can, you know, if you're financially able to sign up for first membership on roosterteeth.com. You'll not only be able to see the episode before it's released for free accounts, you'll also get to see these Ruby Rewind streams where, uh, for example, today it went on for 45 minutes. They had some of Kruby on there, talked about the show, the production, talked about some theories, got some questions off Twitter that the fans want to ask them. It was all in all a very cool experience and it went on for about 45 minutes. Then they showed the clip at the end, which is only about a minute long but it was about a 45 minute show. So me showing a few pictures from that is literally be showing about three seconds worth of content from a 45 minute thing. So by no means am I taking away value from Rooster Teeth. Just want to reinforce that fact. You know, I would highly advise you guys to make a first account. Anyways, um, let's talk about the theories and stuff. So in Ruby Rewind, basically what happened was this. Um, we see that the train crashes, which we already kind of knew about. But so the train is crashed. We see the relic in the snow, just like the volume six trailer. Ruby starts collecting her dust crystals, uh, or rather her dust ammunition. And then we see Yang starting to complain about losing a third of their party. So I guess Jean, Nora, and Ren are not going to be there. Um, and they only gained a defenseless old lady in return. They're talking about the old lady whose name is revealed. And again, you know, spoilers. I already gave a spoiler alert. It's another, another spoiler alert right now. So her name is Maria Calavera. She's hard of hearing. And apparently she's blind without her eye technology. Those goggles, she said she's blind without them. And that they're not working very well. So we can assume that since they're going to Atlas, where obviously the technology is the most advanced out of any kingdom, perhaps she's going there to get repairs on those goggles. Now, of course, the theory that she's a silver eyed warrior has a lot of merit, um, especially in the intro, because you can see the it's interesting how the camera like pans through her eyes and then like into Ruby's silver eyes like this is basically saying she's a silver eyed warrior however she said she's blind so a few different theories could be coming from that one she was a silver eyed warrior and she she still has silver eyes but she's blind it's possible she could be lying and she's not even blind at all and she's just using the goggles to hide her silver eyes and to kind of throw people off also possible or she actually is blind but why would she be blind? Well, I have a theory about that. Perhaps her eyes were removed in the past by Salem's crew. Um, some people were already theorizing on that. Whack Bros, I know you mentioned this in chat. I want to say that I didn't like that theory because it seemed like it would just make Salem's team look incompetent if they removed her eyes but let her live. Like, you might as well just kill her off, right? Why let her live? Seems odd. Salem's uh, crew has never had a problem with killing people before. They've killed plenty of huntsmen and huntresses, plenty of innocent people as well. So I don't see why they would like kill all these other people, but then let one of the biggest threats live, a silver eyed warrior. However, I can justify it slightly. I, I was thinking about it more and more and more. And here's a theory I came up with. Perhaps, perhaps Tyrion was sent to track down silver eyed warriors. Perhaps he found Maria Call, uh, what was her name again? Uh, Maria Calavera. Perhaps he found her and he disobeyed Salem's orders of bringing her back to the base. You know, perhaps Salem was like, I want you to track down and bring back silver eyed warriors. Salem, I'm sorry, uh, Tyrion found Maria and ended up just torturing her and cutting out her eyes. And then he let her live and he went on his way after he had his fun with her. And then he returned to Salem and Salem was extremely mad that he didn't listen to her and he didn't bring her back. Um, and that could re that could result in Salem punishing Tyrion. We see he has scars on his chest. Perhaps that was from Salem torturing him in return. I don't know. Perhaps they're just from battle. It's possible. However, the merit to this theory also, it has some more merit from Volume 4, Chapter 1. Remember when Salem asked Tyrion to track down Ruby? And he was like, Whoa! he was all happy, right? And then Salem said, and bring her back to me. And then he got sad. 
So he was excited to track down Ruby, but he got sad when he was ordered to bring her back. Why is that? He probably was going to torture Ruby and do like horrible things to her. So it's reasonable to assume that this happened in the past. Perhaps he did this to Maria. He tortured Maria, but didn't bring her back. Salem was mad. And like I said, this kind of falls back with that scene from Volume 4, Chapter 1. So that's a theory about the old lady. There's more theories about her too. Really cool stuff that I'm going to get into. Um, but I think I want to make that a separate video. Um, there, she has a very cool inspiration. Um, and it falls in line with the theory that I made like a year ago about Ruby learning how to use Silver Eyes from Summer. All I'm going to say right now is there's a chance that Maria could actually help Ruby get a hold of Summer. I know it sounds kind of crazy. I'll explain it in another video. Be sure you're subscribed and have notifications on so you can... Uh, be one of the first people to get that new information when I drop it coming up soon. Anyways, continue on the preview. So that's near the end. And um, as as Maria admits that she is hard of hearing and blind, Yang says she's basically defenseless. And then Maria is like, I'm not defenseless. I'm only hard of hearing and I'm kind of blind. And then Maria says, you know what? I guess you kind of have a point. And then she starts walking away. As Maria starts walking away, the only person to follow her is Oscar. And I actually think that's awesome because it makes Oscar look like He's, you know, he's naturally inclined to protect somebody that he thinks is weak and vulnerable. Nobody else started going to walk with her. Oscar immediately was going to walk with her. And before that, he actually was like kind of helping her out of the train a little bit too. Just, I want to mention that Oscar again wins some points with me. I think he's such a good kid. I love Oscar. I'm going to be sad if he goes away. I love Austin too. I'm going to be sad if he goes away. It's like a lose-lose scenario. I love both Oscar and Austin. And if only one of them is going to walk away from this, it's going to lose-lose scenario for me, sadly. Anyways, yo, we're getting a lot of subs right now. What's going on? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, anyways, so that's really the end of the preview. It ends with um, Blake and Yang getting pissed at Oscar for lying about the relic. Oscar himself says that he thinks that they deserve an explanation about why he didn't tell them about the relic attracting Grimm. And the preview ends with Oscar taking over. I'm sorry, Austin taking over Oscar. And uh, he says, I didn't lie to you. So we can assume that when the chapter picks up from here, we're going to get a scene with Ospin trying to justify and explain why he didn't tell them about the relic attracting Grimm. Hopefully he has a really good reasoning for it. However, we can take it a step further. Remember the volume six uh, trailer, I think it was. Not the intro, but the trailer. And we see a clip of uh, Oscar reaching out to Team Ruby and Ruby looking horrified. Literally, Ruby Rose kind of looking horrified. The other three are actually looking like they're ready for battle. I'm not even kidding. If you go back and look at Weiss's battle stance before she fought for Null, it was very proper. She was just standing. She was literally just standing like straight, and then she ends up getting mutant after like this. Same position that she's in in this clip. Um, if you look at Blake, Blake's also in her battle position. She's reaching for Gamble Shroud. If you look at Yang, Yang is also in her battle position. She's about to get the shotgun gauntlets. Boom, boom. Well, you know, only one is there. My point is, Yang, Weiss, and Blake are actually in battle stances, and Ruby's the only one who's like, not doesn't want to fight like she's just kind of holding the relic away so whatever happens is going to be insane and based off the trailer and based off this preview it looks like that's going to be right where volume six chapter two picks up the only exception to that is if volume six chapter two ends up starting on maybe gira and Ilya and kali and those people going back to menagerie or maybe team sun or the villains it might start with that and then come back to the team ruby and all this crazy stuff but the point is as soon as we get to the ruby uh, part whether that's right to start or not it's gonna be intense we're gonna get some crazy stuff with Ospin trying to explain this we're gonna see why three fourths of team ruby were kind of getting ready to fight Ospin right there crow and maria are not on screen in that so they are off screened it's gonna be insane it's gonna be insane it's gonna be really good guys so i hope this video hyped you guys up for volume six chapter two um that's all the info we know so far but quite a bit we can theorize on and i can't wait to make more theory videos on all this stuff i hope you guys enjoyed this video be sure again that you're subscribed and have notifications on so you can be aware of the new video as soon as it drops and get that ruby info right away um i'm gonna be having a lot of work ahead so i want to get to work on some more theories right now so i'm gonna wrap this video up um finish editing it and uploading it and get to work on those other theories so again thank you guys for y'all support and if you want to do a little extra consider supporting me over on patreon link down below some cool perks for y'all there and i'm currently like reworking it to make it better as well so much appreciated and um that's it guys i'll catch you next time